Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ignite. Ignite is a two to eight player deck builder along with some arena combat mixed in. You're gonna be playing about 45 to maybe two hours depending on the number of players in the game, and it's probably for ages 12 or 13 and up. In the game Ignite, you're gonna be getting a certain amount of characters based on the race that you choose, and you'll be moving around the board utilizing a deck building mechanic. You're gonna be trying to uh, gather weapons or spells uh, arrows and melee type of weapons and you're going to be playing them uh, whether it's going to be moving around the uh, spaces on the board to gather kills so you can get trophies or you can stay in bazaars or the towns to discard the cards in your hand for a value to purchase cards from the field. Uh, as you defeat your opponents you're going to gather trophies and you're going to win if you A eliminate all the other players or B gather more trophies of a certain number than other players based on the number of players in the game. There's a bunch of different things that take place in the game and there's a ton of different cards. This game is a very very versatile in the amount of stuff that's going to be showing you down here which we will do now showing you all the components and everything I'm trying to talk about as much as I can and then we'll go up and I'll show you a turn or so of how to play the game Ignite. So here we have the game Ignite, and as you can see, this game is massive as far as what is going to be included in the game. Some stuff here is going to be either stretch goals or expansion stuff, which I'll try and separate when we go down and play. But we'll go ahead and go through as much as I can to give you a good idea of what's included in the game, and then we'll go ahead and show you how to play it uh, once we go down below. The first thing you need to know is there's three main types of cards to start with in a deck builder, and uh, it's going to be in this one, shield, movement, and uh, a weapon called a dagger. There is the uh, amount of currency you'll be getting when you discard the card to gather other uh, cards that you're going to be starting with. And then there's the cost of the card to purchase. You're going to simply start with uh, five of these march cards, four daggers, and three old wooden shields to begin. Marches will let you move units around this board here, as you can see, and it's all tile-ridden, with uh, numbers going all the way down uh, vertically and horizontally is going to be numbers. And then you're going to have daggers, which if you're in range, you can discard one of those cards on your turn to do damage to your opponents. Uh, each player is going to be getting one of these guys, which we'll talk about in a second here. Wooden shields will let you discard them in order to stop damage from hurting you. These characters over here, there's um, three of e each of them, and you're going to be selecting one of them, except for the rats, which actually come with additional ones. Um, they all have their own unique passives as far as that goes. But once you choose a faction, they're going to have some type of ability, whether it be to let you discard cards in your hand to prevent attacks, or whether it be to let you move across certain locations easier, uh, some will let you do certain buying things. They, they all have their own unique different advantages in the game. Some will let you go across some nasty terrain as well. Um, you're going to pick these guys and set them aside uh, on your side of the board in the town area. Uh, the rest of the game is going to be based on giving everybody else those 12 cards, exactly as I've shown, and then you won't need these anymore. You're then going to select 12 cards, as you can see here, there are sorry, 16 cards, 4, 4, 4, 4, uh, to start the game's bank of cards that you can go ahead and select from. This is your starting hand, and this is the cards you'll be utilizing in the game. You won't utilize any more other than just these here, and additionally titles if you want. Now, you can go ahead and start with this beginner set here, which is going to have the main range, the main spells, a couple interesting combo cards, and then some uh, some of the more weaponies type melee stuff. Uh, but if you don't want to use, use, use these, or you want to use different ones, all of these cards that you see over here are all going to be included to uh, basically switch around. So you can only be using 16, but you don't have to necessarily use these. And I guess if you wanted to, you could even use more if, you, if need be. Uh, they also are going to include things like these cards here, which are hex cards that you'll go in your deck, uh, depending on if you are utilizing the right card, to hurt players as they're drawing, because you're going to have a hand of six cards. There are a bunch of tokens that are also going to be associated with cards, because you can start building stuff like war machines and whatnot that move around the board. There's going to be some tokens involving damage or poison damage. There's elementals where after you die or your characters are all gone, you can still be in the game placing down elementals on your turn, moving them around the board to try and kill people, and additional tiles as well. A lot of different cards that do a bunch of different things, and it has this huge customizability. But really, the game's only going to be right about here. That's all you're really going to need to play the game. Um, and that's pretty much what's going to be included. Like I said, just all those cards there are just bonus additional cards that we can probably take a look at and give you an idea of the different types of cards. Because for the explanation of this game, when we go down below, we'll just be using the basic cards to give you a good idea of how to play the game Ignite. Alright, let's go down below. 
So now we're beginning Ignite with three players, and of course the board is smaller or bigger depending on the number of players in the game. And if you play with more than a certain number, you're going to be playing like team games. It plays up to eight, uh, which I've never played. I've only played up to four. But they do play more with team variants and whatnot. And I imagine you'll get the same idea with just this players as you would with any other amount. Uh, everybody's got their 12 cards in their deck that they went ahead and shuffled. There's only three types of cards in there, but you're going to be drawing six cards. Um, other classes, such as these human cards, uh, humans are going to get to draw an additional card, so seven cards in hand, but all of their things are going to cost one more to buy. Uh, these guys over here make spell cards, give you, uh, give you currency. Of course, they don't start with that, but when you gather them, uh, you'll be able Able to do so but they're gonna be drawing six cards here as well and then these uh, lizard men here can walk through nasty terrain such as the the uh, I guess these are acid pools and lava without suffering any negative penalties and uh, everybody's gonna get three characters uh, for the most part some other different classes will give you more at a cost of course so uh, let's look at the board here obviously we see alphabet and we see the nu nu numerical all the way up to 18 that's because some things such as meteor strikes well you write down stuff on a piece of paper and if somebody walks into a specific space they're going to take damage or be killed so on and so forth there's reasons why they're here it's a nice little grid system that helps you out uh, this is also fully modular and it's going to have front and back pieces and as you can see you've got this poisonous stuff on one side which is i think the expansion stuff um as well as i believe the ice as well uh, let's go and talk about some of the stuff on the board here first of all you can have these pools here when you walk into them you'll have to discard a card from your hand which is no good uh, when you fall into lava and you're not the lizard men, you instantly die, your character dies, and you only have three, so you gotta be careful with that. Trying to move through ice is going to cost you two movement instead of one. If you go into the water and you're hit by, if, and, and, and you're able to do a frost or a, uh, a lightning spell, it'll actually affect all of the water space. And if you're in the trees and you're affected by a fire spell, it will affect the entire tree line area. That's for the most part. These are all free here spaces. Uh, the back here is basically the, the uh, store shop. And this is where you're going to be able to buy cards based on the number of characters you have back here. So if you have three characters back here, you can buy a total of three from the shop over here. If you only have one character down here, you're only going to be able to buy one. There is an exception, though, in a game that is greater than two players. There's these four spaces in the middle. And if you're there, you'll be able to buy stuff as well as trashing cards from your hand. And trashing means removing from the game to gather points or currency based based on the middle number as opposed to the top left number. Uh, you're going to be placing your units based on the board size and how uh, different rules are going to be for different games. But in general, there's going to be two slots that you're going to have to place your characters in. And you can place them anywhere you want on this board area here. The last thing to note is, yeah, you could stay back here, right, and be out of the fight. But anybody who's back here in these areas will take an additional damage to any attacks that are, that are being dealt. So you... you we're going to be pushing through, basically. And also, uh, you're going to be gathering points or honor based on killing units. So you want to have more more honor than anybody else. This is basically an elimination game for the most part. To begin the game, select one singular player, and they have their cards in hand, and then they're going to play them. Daggers are have a range of one. So if this character was, for instance, right here, and this character was right here, this would have a range of one, and thus do one damage to it. And it says it can, it, it can be blocked by any weapon. So any weapon discard from this character's hand could stop that damage. If not, it's going to simply put one damage on it. All characters have three health, and when all three damage is dealt to a character, they are removed from the game. But how to get from here to here? Well, that is with your march card. It says movement one. If you play that from your hand, you can simply move one unit, one space, and uh, wow, I've got five in my hand, so if I wanted to, I could go one, two, three, four, five, and play all of my movement cards. My daggers wouldn't be useful, though, because I wouldn't be able to get, reach uh, any of the enemy units. But let's say instead, maybe I only moved uh, two spaces with two movement, then I could try and buy stuff. And over here, it has their cost. There's a three, there's a four, there's a six, there's a five. Maybe I want something like a triple sheath. That's pretty good. Draw three cards and put any melee weapons into your hand. So I would go ahead and spend a three currency. Uh, then putting into my discard pile and I would take this triple sheath and put it well sorry into play they'd all stay in play like this and then after that I have two more movement to use I put them like that I can then move two more because nothing here costs two and then after that everything that has been played is going to go into my discard pile oh as a human actually uh, all my all the spells cost one additional so I don't get to move one additional but that would be it that'd be my hand would be emptied I'd then draw my next seven cards and whenever you run out of cards in your deck you're gonna then shuffle your discard pile up and and draw to your full hand size 
and the next player is going to get to go, discarding car uh, playing cards in order to gather them for currency based on the top left, or playing them to either move, attack, do a spell, etc., etc., based on what's over here. So that's the idea. Let's come over here and I'll show you uh, what we've got here. We've got like a gladiator net, it has a range of one or two, and it can make basically make a target not be able to move on their next turn. Pretty sweet, right? It's going to cost four and have two currency when it's in your hand. Fire arrows are going to do one damage, and they're also going to affect this area here or this area here. Basically, there's three enemy units in these areas here, and I fire arrow. Maybe I'm over here with a guy and I have a bow, and it's three, it's two to three, four, uh, four spaces. I can hit this with a fire arrow, and it'll hit all of them doing one damage to all of them. So fire arrows can be kind of cool, but they're also gonna be more expensive than a basic arrow. In which is, there's a longbow there, and there's the arrow right there. There's a large quiver, lets you draw from your deck five cards and look for arrows and put them into your hand. That's pretty cool. You've got stuff like this full moon axe. This guy is a baddie. If you're close to a player, you're able to try and do one damage to them. And regardless of whether you hit or not, you're gonna make them discard a card from their hand. And remember, you only draw at the end of your turn. So when you start your get your hand off, uh, start your turn, and you only have two cards in your hand, you're basically gonna be screwed, right? Uh, there's additional movement. There's some movement cards that also do damage. There's the spell cards that do things like ice wall. For instance, uh, if my character has an ice wall, I, it would let me do this. And if there was a unit, for instance, that was right here, when this ice wall spawns, it pushes the unit here. Now, that's not too big of a deal, but let's say I was actually over here and I did ice wall, that would push this unit into the uh, lava, instantly killing them, giving me a trophy, right? So there's some cool different spells, and there's gonna be a lot of different tokens based on how those spells work. Um, and there's a ton of extra additional tokens over here that do different things for all the different cards that are associated with uh, the, the, the different options as far as the buying pool. And there's also poison damage. There's these elementals that in a large enough player game, you can actually start spawning elementals and they have like one health. They move around the board and they're trying to also, you're trying to gather trophies, but elementals aren't worth anything. So it's an interesting way of adding in a player non-elimination in a game like this. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is over here are all of these title cards and they're going to have a certain cost on them. Five, seven, nine. You can buy them for a certain cost, and then after that, somebody can steal it from you for the next cost. So if I buy it for five, you can steal it from me for seven, back and forth, back and forth, until it gets to its highest cost, in which case you'd have to only be buying it with that highest cost. And they have a bunch of great abilities. You can choose whatever titles you want to begin the game with to add to the pool. They are, there's only one of them each, but they're all individual, all your own uh, unique aspects to them. And that's basically the game. You're basically trying to go around uh, the board, doing damage to players uh, in a tactical fashion, using a deck building strategy, always gaining more cards, trashing the bad ones out of your deck, and trying to succeed in the game Ignite. All right, let's come up and talk about maybe some of the extra cards, as well as what I think about the game, and then whether you should pick it up. All right, so before we get into my review of Ignite, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of the interesting aspects of the game, the different types of cards that I didn't show you, because there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of deck building involved in this game that you can kind of manipulate. This is going to be almost infinitely replayable. If you like these kind of games, you're going to really like the fact that this game has a ton of stuff. Uh, Gold Stash is one of my cards that I really enjoy. It's going to cost four, uh, six, but it's going to give you four, so you're going to be able to load your deck up with more currency to buy better cards faster. I like that type of aspect in a deck builder. Earthquake's pretty cool too. You choose one of your units and all units in a 3x3 three three grid, basically a little square there, uh, with, uh, to, uh, with your with your unit two spaces from the middle of the grid. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, it tells you exactly what it, where your unit counts from. It will be knocked down. So he goes like this, and he shatters the earth all around him, and any units around there are going to get knocked down by basically flipping over that unit. It's a way to make that unit lose a turn, basically. But nonetheless, really cool. I like these area effects. I showed you already the ice wall that pushes things into lava or blocks you from having to deal with melee units and all that kind of stuff. Loving Squire is a card you actually put down face, face uh, up in front of you, and then you can store units uh, or weapons or arrows or whatever on this card and you can use it for a later turn because every round in this every turn in this game everything is in play will be removed unless otherwise stated and this card actually is otherwise stated i like that aspect mirror spell i'm going to counter your spell and play it against you I mean, that's just a lot of fun it's going to cost you 10 and give you zero whenever you want to discard it but that's the cost of spells right then there's war machines i think this is an expansion or addition 
to, to the game. Basically, war machines work like this. You're going to have a unit. You're going to build the war machine. It's actually going to be placed down in front of that unit. It's going to take a certain amount of turns in order to utilize that war machine. And then you're going to be moving a unit with that war machine to keep it enacted in order for the turns to count down. So you'll also be using the fact that it can move at every turn, but it can only move one space regardless of the movement cards. There's a lot of different rules involved with how the war machines work, but once they're up and at them, they can only be destroyed by certain things. Like, for instance, there's that um, that fireball that comes down, or the ignite. There's certain things that can... a torch. They can destroy the war machines, but otherwise they're just huge ballistas that do tons of damage. In fact, this one here is the catapult, and I think there's... yeah, there is a ballista in it as well. Uh, War Machines are super sweet. I like that. I hope they do, do enact that. Another really, really cool one is a curse card. When you actually play a weapon card, for instance, if I had something like a dagger, and I wanted to play it from my hand in order to attack you, I can go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and play this card on you. It's a dagger. And then you can choose to block or not. If the attack gets blocked, you go, okay, I, I had a vampire's curse on it. I'm going to have to take one damage. If you don't, however, this will actually steal unit or transfer uh, health from the unit that you attack onto the hero that you're using to attack with. Really, really cool. I like the, uh, the vampire's curse. A nice little add additive mechanic to the game. And then we have one I don't like. Maybe just for a two-player game. It's the only time I actually played with the card once was in a two-player game. It's called Full Moon Axe. It's going to cost you six, and it's going to give you two currency if you use it like if you use it this card. It's got a range one and a damage one, but regardless, if... It attacks a unit, uh, that player is going to discard a card from their hand. And if you have a bunch of these in your hand, as well as uh, certain things that let you cycle weapons through and through, you can actually make your opponents have no hand on their turn, which is basically like losing a turn. And that's really, really hard to, to want to continue playing in a two-player game when your opponent is able to do that to you. There's a lot of ways around it. And also, with all of these cards, you don't have to utilize them. You can make any 16-card deck you want, along with any titles, which is really cool. So anyway, that's a lot of the things. The last thing is like hex cards that we put into decks. They're basically like like damage that you can take and when you draw them you can get a hex instead of a card which ah it sucks so that's how those work so ignite first of all the artwork is amazing i love the artwork on this game it's great it shows exactly what it needs to show for this type of fantasy style area controly tactical game that has a deck building mechanic built into it in order to utilize your units. I love that. That feels super great to play that way. I like building mechanical decks and this game lets you do it. It has 16 cards and with the base cards they're pretty cool. But I like these better, and there's certain cards I won't use in the base, like the Full Moon Axe. I just hate using that card because, especially if I'm not using it, it just bothers me when somebody's making me lose discard cards constantly on my turn. I have no cards in my hand. But there is a ton of other cool stuff that you can utilize in the game, which makes it so fun and so replayable. The board has a bunch of extra stuff on it. There's expansion stuff like the fetid pools or whatever those poison acid pools are, and there's those ice spaces that you have to walk through uh, that need two, two movement instead of one. The fact that you can do fire on the force that damages everything it reminds me of like a mobile app style game or tactics, you know, Final Fantasy tactics to feel. And the same with the water as well. You can walk onto those spaces. There's no penalty for doing that. But if you're dealing with an ice mage and you're on the water, you got to make sure you don't have more than one unit on there. Or you're going to suffer some penalties. And also, my first thing when I was when I was thinking about this game, I'm like, what if I just stay in the shop area and just build my deck while he wastes his time using cards to move around the board? Well, the thing is, if I'm staying in that shop area, I'm going to then lose control of where I need to be placing my units on the board, and I'm also going to be in range of taking that damage of an extra damage whenever you have character in the outside border of the board, which you want to be very careful of because that does make a big difference. All your units only have three health, so if you take two damage from an axe. You're going to take that extra third damage and your unit's just instantly dead. So there is that to be aware of. Um, but for the most part, the game is a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff involved in this game. I have no idea what the price point's going to be. I'd like to check that out, especially because there's so much you're going to get with it. But if you like the deck building aspect, if you like tactics, you're going to like this smash up of this. Feels great. I love the different cards. Uh, as far as negative things, there's just some certain cards I'm not really interested in that I would just never play with because I don't like the functionality of them. But that's such a small quiet cry complaint for all the different cards you can then utilize. Uh, overall, I really, really like Ignite. Uh, if you're a player who likes these tactical style games and you like deck builders, I definitely suggest this one. If you uh, are interested in like lighter games that take a little bit less time to set up, this game does require you to place all the different pieces around the board based on different settings and different players and variables, which is great on one side, but on the other side it can be a little complex for certain people. Realizing which types of cards to make that 16 card setup 
uh, is another chore too. If you make up the make the wrong setup, the game might not be as enjoyable because maybe you just have all spells. It doesn't give you enough maneuverability as to what you want to put in there. And that's little things, but I figured I'd mention them for people that are, in, are not as interested in that aspect of the game. Anyway, Ignite is a solid game. I really, really enjoy it. It's definitely getting my seal of approval. That's how much I enjoyed this game, provided that dang axe isn't included, all right? Definitely check it out down below, currently on Kickstarter. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and all this help we do really greatly appreciate it. As well as taking a look at Ignite. It's a really great tactics deck builder. Something I haven't seen before, which is very unique, and I like that aspect as well. And also, you check out our site, unfilteredgamer.com. We have blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can win some stuff on there right now. we got some great giveaways going on. Speaking of giveaways, thegiveawaygeek.com and everythingboardgames.com, two great sites to give a ton of great giveaways. Uh, and don't forget to check out my friend, Ferdinand, the Cardboard Stacker. He's got a ton of great stuff as well. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to igniting you next time.